welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to talk about how slow stitching has changed my life. It slowed my life down. I now appreciate the small things like these last few blooms in my garden before autumn kicks in. I really appreciate them so much more than I ever did. I'm always looking now for the small things in life that can really give us joy. And here are some cucumbers that I've been growing this summer. They look just about ready to be eaten. I really enjoyed slowing down and it's thanks to slow stitching. That's what's done this for me. So I thought I would tell you a bit about how it's changed my life. It really has. I try to get up early in the morning before everybody else does and just go outside and have a look at the flowers that are in the garden. Then I take my time making my breakfast and I really enjoy these quiet moments before everybody else gets up. I love just sitting in the quiet, in the peaceful surroundings, enjoying my breakfast. But don't get me wrong, not every morning is like this. This is what I strive towards, this is what I aim for. I achieve it sometimes, but not all the time. I discovered slow stitching a few years ago and it's really this book that has made the big, big difference to my life. This book really inspired me. It's written by Florence Knapp and I've followed her online since the beginning, since her blogging days and she's a really big inspiration to me and her philosophy and everything she talks about in this book is really, really inspiring to me. If you're looking to buy a book about English paper piecing, I can't recommend this one highly enough. It's absolutely wonderful. Not only does she show you tips and techniques, but there's lots of history and information about English paper piecing too. Once I really got into English paper piecing, that was when my philosophy started to change. I now work with scrap fabrics as much as possible and I'm really conscious about what I buy. I try to only buy exactly what I need for a project so I don't have too much surplus materials left over but I do enjoy using even the tiniest scraps that you can see here. That's one of the reasons why I really like buying a block of the month kit or having some Liberty Fat 16 that just small amounts that are exactly what I need for a project and there isn't going to be much left over, there isn't going to be much waste, although I never waste any scraps anyway. It's certainly true that in the past I have bought too much, I've bought fabrics that I don't need, fabric that I didn't have a plan for and I've still got those today and I will use what I've got, I want to use the things that are in my stash. I'm much more conscious now about thinking carefully about what I buy and that's really come from this attitude of slowing down and taking my time and planning projects more carefully. It's so easy to see things online that you want to make and I do get those feelings too, I want to make this, I want to make that, I want to buy this, I want to buy that, but I really have to keep reminding myself that I don't need to that I can enjoy what I've got. I've got plenty and I really love the things that I've got. And if I do buy things, which I, I do still, of course, buy fabric and notions and things, but I make sure that they're things I really love and that I have a plan for them. So that's just one way in which slow stitching has changed me. But it's also changed the way I approach the things I make. It's changed my mentality completely. In the past, I used to be desperate for the finished item and I wanted it to be done before I'd even started it. I was desperate to have the finished quilt or a bag or a pouch or whatever it was that I was making. I just wanted that item. But once I discovered this slow, methodical approach to making, it completely changed that mindset totally. Now I'm very much a process stitcher. I'm in the moment with my stitching and I'm concentrating on that. I'm thinking about each stitch at a time and that mentality has moved me away from the desperation to have the finished item. Of course from time to time that comes back and I think oh I wish I had a finished quilt and 
maybe one day I will have a finished EPP quilt. But right now the feelings I have over everything else is that I just want to be making. And I don't mind too much if I don't finish them. I just love the process. And this slow approach has really changed everything for me. But perhaps the biggest way that slow stitching has improved my life, aside from making me more conscious of what I'm buying, aside from making sure I'm not wasting anything, and aside from not always wanting more, it has completely improved my well-being and my mental health. I've suffered from stress, anxiety, and I still do, but trying to make sure I put a bit of slow stitching into my daily routine has had a massive positive effect on me. And that's what's motivated me to share what I'm doing with you. That's why I began sharing my work last year on Instagram, to find people who were the same as me and also to spread the message to people who perhaps have never tried this. That has the greatest calming effect that I've ever experienced. And coming back to Florence Knapp's book, she talks about it in there. And when I read that chapter, which is called Creating Order in Chaos, I remember running down the stairs to my husband and saying, it's in a book. It's been written about in a book that this sort of sewing has such a calming effect and um, if you do buy the book please read this chapter because it was so reassuring and affirming for me to read in words by somebody I really admire how this type of stitching really is proven scientifically to have a positive effect on well-being. Everything I'd experienced was explained in the book and I was feeling things and I didn't really understand or know why that I felt this way when doing this type of sewing and reading it in the book just made it really clear and that's why I was so excited about it because it was like somebody understood me and that made me realise that there are other people out there who understand this and also why I want to tell other people about it. She talks about how when things are feeling out of control, the repetitive nature of wrapping the fabric around the paper and taking those slow stitches to join them together can really help to calm your mind. You switch off from the outside world and those rhythmic steps to create something really help you to feel calm and safe. And it's so true. So if you haven't tried this sort of stitching, then give it a go. And that's the beauty of this pastime, is that you just need a simple needle, thread, paper and fabric, and you can use fabric scraps, and you can create something. If you're a knitter or a crocheter, I'm pretty sure you have experienced this too. That repetitive nature of making those stitches is so overwhelmingly calming. So we are lucky, aren't we, that we have these hobbies that we can turn to. So that's why I really try and grab those moments of calm, usually in the morning and also at night. It just really helps to centre me and to, to keep me grounded and to keep me calm and to keep me sane.
This year has been the toughest year for us all. And yes, there have been moments when slow stitching hasn't been enough to calm my mind. But on the whole, it really does make a massive difference to my life and I hope it does to yours too. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. Bye bye.